Be it's great uh, to speak to you again and another special guest, uh, the remarkable Pete Woodcock from Cornerstone Kingston upon Thames. Uh, I believe when he came and preached in Mount, we've seen people uh, being saved uh, through his preaching. Uh, and he's one of the founders, I think, of Contagious and speaks there, the Christian camps. But uh, we just uh, you're just going to be really blessed listening. Uh, to this. Hello, uh, Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. It's lovely, uh, lovely to be speaking to you. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, thank you for Steve as well, giving me this opportunity. Steve uh, spoke at our church on Sunday night, well, through video. In fact, as I was recording this just a minute ago, he rang up and broke into this talk. So there we go. He's uh, uh, no, it's lovely. To, it's, it's, it's lovely to be speaking to you, and it's terrific that you've done four times around reading the whole Bible together as a church. That's epic. We've done it once. I mean, four times is just brilliant. Listen, I want to leave with you, uh, leave you with just a thought. Uh, Jesus said he that I am the good shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd. It's a wonderful thought. Years ago, I, I, I worked for a, a safari park and unfortunately, the way the animal keep, uh, keepers treated the animals was pretty horrible. But I've been watching that series on the TV called The Secret Life of the Zoo and the animal keepers there are lovely. They, they know their animals, they even name their animals. Uh, they know, you know, they clean them out and they feed them and they wash them and they know when they're ill and they know what time to mate them and all of that sort of stuff. And they're very intimately taken up with their animals that they care for. So much so that when they're ill, they're, they're quite upset and they stay all night sometimes with, with their animals. So you've got, you know, good animal keepers and bad animal keepers. Jesus, guess what, is a good one. He says, I am the good shepherd. And of course, who are the sheep? Well, they're people like you and me. They're those that, that God has brought into his sheepfold through the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the good shepherd. And that's a wonderful thing. He cares for his sheep, you and me. He knows what the best food is. He knows, you know, all kinds of stuff about us. And he even names us. He knows who he's looking after. If you read John chapter 10, where you find that wonderful verse, I am the good shepherd, you'll see a lot of stuff. I mean, too much in the few minutes that I've got to tell you. But you see that he, he isn't like a hired hand. He's not just a shepherd. He actually owns the sheep. So he's not like someone who's just making money out of sheep and then sells them on. Actually, this is his investment. This is his life. This is who, as we're going to see in a minute, that he's going to lay his life down for. They're his. In fact, they're his identity. He even identifies himself uh, in line with the sheep. I am a good, the good sheep herd. Do you see that? He, he is, you know, part of these sheep, if, if, if you like. He's the good shepherd. And he's a, he, he cares and knows. But it, he also knows their names. So, you know, in The Secret Life of the Zoo, they even named like a cockroach. There was a cockroach called Carl, Carl the Cockroach. Well, Jesus is a good shepherd and he knows our name. It says in verse 14 of John 10, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. And then he says, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. Just as intimate as God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus is that intimate with us. He knows us he, and we know him. It's so intimately lovely. He's a good shepherd, not just some distant God far away, but he's this good shepherd that cares for the sheep. And then he says he lays his life down for the sheep. I mean, in this, in this chapter, you see it three times. I'm the good shepherd and I lay my life down for the sheep. I lay my life down for the sheep. I lay my life down for the sheep. He lays his life down for the sheep because the sheep have wandered off and need to be brought back into the fold. And the only way to bring them back into the fold of God, 
because we've wandered into sin is that Jesus dies for us, dies for the sheep. So a wonderful picture he talks suddenly about, you know, the, 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 the 99 uh, sheep are in the fold and the one sheep has gone, gone missing. And uh, Jesus paints that picture, doesn't he, of the shepherd going out and finding the sheep and putting it on his shoulders. And I th- if that isn't a picture of the cross, I don't know what is. That's what Jesus did, isn't it? He goes out and he finds the lost sheep and he puts it on his shoulders. He bears their weight like on the cross. He bears the weight of their sin and rebellion and wanderings and lostness. and brings us back to the fold. There's a little um, nursery rhyme, bet you know it, called Little Bo Peep. I mean, she's a rubbish shepherd. This is how it goes. Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and doesn't know where to find them. Leave them alone, she says, and they'll come home, wagging their tails behind them. Well, one, she's a rubbish shepherd because she's lost her sheep. And two, she says, leave them alone because they find their own way home. No, they won't. The good shepherd has to go out and find those lost sheep and pay the price on the cross to bring them home. That's a good shepherd. Little Bo Peep isn't. And then he leads the sheep, we're told. Um, by his voice speaking to them and then we listen to him uh, speaking and so I'm really chuffed that you as a church have gone through the whole bible the voice of Jesus four times because you're listening to his voice and therefore he'll guide you into those good pastures I'm the good shepherd said Jesus keep trusting in him